had a, I was very lucky. I had a long history of working in East Africa. Um, and Lake Nature lies next door to Serengeti National Park. Okay. Um, but nothing's known about Lake Nature. Very few people went there. Um, and it's just a place that has everything. You know, it has epic, bold landscapes. It has an active volcano. It has thousand foot Rift Valley wall, you know, cliff that runs along, you know, one, one side of this beautiful lake that reflects the sky like a mirror or certain seasons turns bright vivid red mm -hmm. you know? I mean, it's a crazy place and uh, at this crazy place you have this spectacle which is equivalent to the wildebeest migration in Serengeti effectively you know uh, a spectacle of you know, thousands and thousands of birds who, who, who use this one location as their only uh, breeding breeding ground in, in the world you know? it's it has everything for a big screen film so um, we were first, well. I was first introduced to the place by uh, by a friend who'd been flying over it in a micro flight, getting images with a little video camera. He showed showed us together some footage of it, and uh, it just blew our minds. It was sort of so. It felt like a, an art installation. You know, he'd taken this these pictures of all those reflections, and um, and so my my introduction to the place was was through uh, some film footage rather than actually going there and. and uh, uh, and as I learned more about it, um, I uncovered more things and didn't realise that when I first saw this footage that this was such an important area for the flamingos, the only place that they breed in. So mm. um, we picked a good year to, to make the film. I mean, we didn't expect the volcano to go off, which mm. uh, which it did when we were there. So which how often does that? Every 40 okay. years or something? Yeah, oh. no, it's amazing. pretty good. <laughs> pretty, pretty we were pretty happy. <laughs> nice, nice, nice part of the film. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Visually amazing. There, there was a, yeah. there was initial panic, you know, when when the thing first started to erupt. It was <laughs> like, you know, what do we do here? Um, but um, I guess we learned to live with it, and, uh, and and it was exciting. And part of the film shows the very inhospitable or, or tough conditions of of the lake um, to the birds. But I mean, I imagine that must be quite hard to work in as well. How it, was your experience of that? It, it is, but you know, you're. I mean, as a filmmaker, you know, you're, you're out in these places that no one's been to before, you're seeing stuff that no one's seen before, so the compensations of, of the physical, the, the difficulty of working in the physical environment there are, are, are manifest, you know, it's a, a privilege. We were lucky as well because um, we kind of inherited this um, old missionary house um, which on the east side of the lake where we could operate from, and uh, the foundations were there which we built onto and made actually a very comfortable camp that we could if we go out on these these missions for a few days to go and film certain things that was generally very uncomfortable quite dirty work we'd be able to go back and you know rejuvenate there and, and, yeah. and take a take a bath in the hot springs and all that sort of stuff so it was balanced with some very grueling conditions and some some good living <laughs> and then and also I think a lot of people are gonna uh, see the film and they'll sort of link it in a way to March of the March of the Penguins just because it's a <laughs> You know, uh, yeah, it's a wildlife film. Exactly, but, and it's a, a feature, but, but, a but, real feature film. I mean, do you think there's a, a real future for this scale of a wildlife film? Well, potentially, but for us, this is always more than just a wildlife film. I mean, I think that's the point. We wanted this to be a cinema film, um, yeah. and we think we've led enough in there that, that takes it a little bit beyond the conventional wildlife format. I mean, certainly. Penguins made things possible for us, but we were developing this film before Penguins was released. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think uh, uh, one of the um, maxims that Disney Nature uh, have developed is that nature tells the most incredible stories. And I think a lot of people's reaction to seeing films like ours um, is that this is real, this is going on. You know, there's not much of this left. And I think it's uh, a very different kind of cinema experience. It can be really very uplifting and very beautiful, and also at the same time quite sad as parts of our film is um, and so already within nature you have great dramas and, and great moments of tenderness so I think these films deserve to be, these stories deserve to be told in, in the cinema environment for sure. There are some very sad moments in the film um, I suppose that's the, the reality of nature isn't it? Well it's uh, the reality of life you know I mean these films got, have got to mean you know something to people and we all know that life is, is hard but it's nice to know that there is the possibility of renewal, which is what this film is actually really about.
Yeah. I mean, is that hard to film? Because I mean, you must follow these um, these animals quite closely to work with them. Um, is that hard to just be an observer and? Well, as a, as, a, as a filmmaker, when you get a dramatic scene, like for example in the Marabous of the Flamingo Colony, mm. you're, you're actually, I would say, pleased and very, excited. Very excited. Because, you know, this is what, you know, this is the essence of a film, you know, yeah. to capture dramatic action and movement. So when, these, when you're presented with these opportunities, um, that's, that's, that's what you're looking for. Um, it, it's, it's difficult, you know, to witness, you know, death on what could be quite a large scale but it's part of life and you know. you've seen much worse haven't you in the Serengeti oh yeah lions oh. ripping things apart so I've yeah. seen this film was probably quite gentle by comparison <laughs> very sad of course to see yeah. these chicks with their anklets and stuff but yes. you know um, we did save a few of these anklet chicks by oh really yeah, yeah, yeah we did yeah. yeah we had to chip the soda off their legs with, with you know actually very you know like a hammer I mean it's like concrete really hard to get up but for the smaller children in the audience, they might like to know <laughs> know that. I quite like to know. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we had you know Mel write us out you know quite a um, an extensive treatment before we went into filming. Mm, so like a shopping our time, <laughs> yeah, our time was well spent, um, and uh, we didn't waste time you know going in directions that weren't going to deliver anything for the film. We had 13 months filming on this film, really, and that seems like a long time, but that's actually quite a short time to do a 75-minute wildlife movie. Um, so working efficiently is, is essential, um, and a, a, a template, a guideline, mm. is for these films particularly important. It's your highlight week. I I like the arrivals of the flamingos in the lake. I think that's that's my Mm. Mm -hmm. And I and I love the, the shots of the you know, just like a million flamingos on, on, in the green that you get what we got from the air and just flying over that it just feels just really epic so it's a really a great shot to have, have found. Absolutely. I mean, uh, you mentioned before you taking a, a break, which I'm sure you need <laughs> after after all this. But what would you like to sort of tackle next? Is there a the world's a big place. Um, and these films are lifestyle choices, so you know you have to find a topic that will engage, you know, for two, three, four years. Um, so there's a lot of thinking 